Good morning everyone and welcome to the video Jazz here. Firstly, Happy New Year. Now I woke up this morning thinking what would everyone want to do on New Year's Day? And the first thing I thought about was CT Brains. thing to look for I kind of go through quick scroll through and the main thing I look for first basically is you want to assess the soul side make sure there's no effacement uh, which could if there was could suggest the presence of some uh, localized edema or or generalized edema in that case and then kind of scrolling through as we look on this one it looks pretty good and then we also want to have a look at the ventricular size as well just to make sure either that they're not too small or not too big and as we know as the patient gets older there's generalized kind of volume loss and the ventricles will kind of start to appear larger than they would in say a child so these ones uh, look age appropriate which is good um, so that's the first thing so we've had a look at the ventricle caliber and then also the sulcal pattern and they look age appropriate so then you kind of want to move on to the grey and white matter kind of interface and see what that looks like. Now this is an older patient so we can see there's kind of low attenuation within this periventricular white matter which likely reflects kind of chronic small vessel ischemic change. Um, and I guess the main thing to make sure is that there is preservation of the grey and white matter interface a subtle loss of that can suggest, uh, sorry, can suggest early ischemia. So having a look through that, so like we said, uh, chronic small vessel ischemic change in this patient. So that's the kind of the first step there. Um, and then we kind of will move along and we want to make sure that there is either, firstly, a lot of the time CT head will be done to look for or to exclude hemorrhage. So we'll have a look through just to make sure that there's no hemorrhage. So it's always important to look through multiple planes. So we're going through the axial here. Now the places that you want to look for hemorrhage, hemorrhage can either be intraaxial or extraaxial. So having a look through, so say looking for intraaxial hemorrhage first, which will be in the parenchyma itself, we go through. And hemorrhage is always hyperdense, predominantly, uh, at least with acute hemorrhage and then the attenuation kind of reduces as the blood product kind of ages and becomes older. So we're looking through the parenchyma, I don't see any hemorrhage. And then the next thing is to look for extraaxial hemorrhage, you know, which is like your extradural, subdural hemorrhages. Um, and then usually they'll be, you know, kind of sitting along the convexities of the cerebral hemispheres. Now looking along the margins, I don't see any. Again, like I said before, usually by the time you're doing this scan, you'll be looking for hyperdense blood product. So we've looked through on the axial, it's always, always important that you look through on other planes as well, particularly a coronal um, sequence is always very useful, particularly along the convexity, you can always pick up subtle hemorrhages. So we're kind of going through back and forward, and now we're heading posteriorly. Again, looking nice and clean, not seeing any hemorrhage there. And then kind of making sure you go all the way back, all to the back. Now, it's always important to kind of also look along these uh, jaw reflections. Uh, so this is the temporum, so belly. And there can always be subtle subdural hemorrhage that layers along here as well. And again, we don't see any kind of asymmetrical thickening to suggest any hemorrhage. So that looks fine. And then also along the pops as well, there can be parapox on some jewels as well. So scrolling through, just making sure that's kind of even and no kind of asymmetric bulging. And then also taking note that the cortical vein will also drain up here. So if you do see these vessels kind of merging in, then that's normal. 
So that's all looking fine. We don't see any hemorrhage. And while you're looking through the same kind of claims, you'll also be looking for any, you know, masses, which can also, like hemorrhage, be intraxial or extraxial. And we don't see any on these images. Okay, so once we've assessed that, then so basically, so far, we've looked at the fragment itself, make sure there's no edema, um, any self-effacement, the ventricle caliber is good. Then we've assessed the gray white matter interface, and then we moved along and looked for hemorrhage or any lesions in multiple planes, which we haven't found any. And then lastly, you kind of want to move on to the bone window. And here you're looking at several things as well. So firstly, you always go down to uh, temporal bone, uh, looking at the mastoid air cells. Is there a mastoid effusion? Is there any fluid that kind of extends into the middle ear cavities? The acicular chains look okay. And then if you really want, you can also look at the inner ear structures as well. You can see the semicircular canal there, cochlea, um, just to make sure there's no gross abnormality. Obviously, if the clinical history is particularly worried about uh, middle or inner ear pathology, you obviously pay a lot more attention to it. And so we've had a look at that, and then we can move on to the paranasal sinuses. So you want to look to see if there's any kind of nasal thickening and fluid, and these look pretty good. And then after that, uh, you want a bone lesions. Uh, if there's a history of trauma, you want to make sure there's no bone fracture. So guys, that's my quick approach to CT heads. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.